In this video, you will learn how you can identify the horizontal phase shift for the graph of a cosine function. Now, I've always found it easier to find the c-value for a cosine function than for a sine function, and after this video, you'll have to see if you agree. We'll start with the graph of y equals cosine x, and I've marked the maximum point on the y-axis. Let's call this the start point. All I have to do to identify the phase shift is to find out what happens to this point after the transformation. Now, I'm going to apply a few random stretches, so a vertical stretch, and you can see that when I apply a vertical stretch, it does move the point, but it doesn't move the point off of the y-axis. Applying horizontal stretches doesn't do anything to the point, so we're not concerned there. But after applying these two stretches, you can see that there's really no phase shift to speak of. Okay. Now, I'm going to apply a vertical translation, and, and it kind of does the same thing that the vertical stretch does. It moves the point up and down the y-axis, but again, since the point remains on the y-axis, there's actually no phase shift to speak of. Now, once I apply a c-value, say I apply that c-value, then that point moves off of the y-axis. But here's the beauty of it all. The phase shift, or the c-value, is simply the horizontal distance between the y-axis and where the point is now. Okay, and so all you have to do is, again, you, you don't get the benefit of being able to see this point uh, in a particular problem. You'll just be given the blue graph and you'll be asked, okay, well, what's the horizontal phase shift? Um, or what's the c-value? So all you have to do is look for a maximum and you have several maxima to choose from. Typically, we choose the one that is closest to the y-axis. And so you, you see the where the closest maximum is to the y-axis and whatever the horizontal distance is between the y-axis and the maximum that is precisely your c-value. In this case we would say that the c-value is pi over 3 radians. So in your equation it would look like cos bracket x minus pi over 3. Now if I were to move a little farther to the right then I could still use 2 pi over 3 as my c value, but now there's actually a closer uh, maximum to the y-axis, but it's shifted off of the y-axis to the left. So in your, so if this was, I don't know, 0 0.1, then in your equation you would see cos bracket x plus 0 0.1. Okay. Now we usually pick the one that is closest to the y-axis, but it would not be incorrect to use any of the other ones. 